Hello. Welcome. We're going to be doing an Instagram live campus tour, so stick around. We're just waiting for the rest of our staff to get on. Welcome, everybody. Hope you stick around for our Instagram live tour. Awesome. Looks like there's a lot of you. Sweet. All right, we can go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome everybody to our Instagram Live Campus Tour. We're so excited to show you around Chico State. Safety does remain a top priority, so our student staff on campus does have masks in case anyone else um, gets close to them, but our staff will be staying very par far apart during the tour. Uh, I'll be your host. My name is Jaina, and I just finished up my junior year at Chico State. I'm a music industry major and a marketing minor. Um, if you have any questions throughout the tour, feel free to send them in the comments and my coworker Gracie will ask, answer them. If you want me to answer the questions, send them in the question box um, and I will answer those in between um, switching to the different tour guides. All right, and what else am I missing? Um, we're gonna have four other campus ambassadors with us doing the tour today. Their names are Diana, Christian, Cheyenne, and Caitlin, and they'll introduce themselves once we go ahead and get started. So um, if you have a question, shoot them to the question box so we can get through everybody's questions. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and send it over to Diana, who's gonna start the tour over at the SSC. Hi, Hi Diana. Diana. How's it going? Good. How are you? Thanks for starting this. All right. Um, so my name is Diana. I'm a senior. I am from San Diego, California, and I'm studying public health and nutrition and food science. I'll be done this December, and then I will be taking a year off to get all of my applications ready to apply to a medical school program. Um, I'll go ahead and start with this building. Um, this is the Student Services Center, or the SSC for short. So this is like a one-stop student resource shop. Um, um, there's four different floors, so I'll go ahead and start with the fourth floor is home to our Wellcat Counseling Center, where you can um, go make an appointment and see a counselor. Uh, we also have our third floor um, Student Learning Center, and that is where you can go get free tutoring. There's supplemental instructors, which is when that student previously took the course that you're in and um, maintained a good relationship with the professor and meets with them once a week to be able to kind of help you. Um, in a supplemental course each week. And then there's also a writing center on the third floor where you can go get your essay edited or any kind of paper you have coming up that you just want someone else to review. Um, that is also where we have our study abroad office on the third floor. So we have a really great study abroad program here. If you want to learn more information, their office is located there and they also have a phone number located online. On the second floor, we have my favorite resource, in this building, um, it's the Career Center where you can meet with career advisors who will help you edit your resume, cover letter, write both of those if you have no idea what any of those are, kind of prepare for interviews. Um, they do mock interviews. Sometimes uh, you might have a phone interview or a Skype interview and you want like a private room to reserve. They have rooms in there that you can reserve ahead of time so you have a private safe space to conduct those interviews in. On the um, second floor is also where we have the financial aid and scholarship office. So if you have any questions about financial aid, your FAFSA application, um, anything to do with tuition and payments, scholarship, loans, payment plans, you can go ahead and give them a call. They're located on the second floor of this building. And then on the first floor is home to my office, the office that's putting this tour together, the office of admissions. If you have any questions um, regarding your application, transferring in anything like that go ahead and give us a call um and then right across from the office of admissions on the first floor is the office of the registrar they're the ones in charge of making sure you stay on track for graduation that's where our graduation advisors are um and then if you need a transcripts copies for applying to grad programs a job anything that kind of proves you were a student here you want to see your transcripts you can go ahead and request those from that office as well and then I'm walking over to this corner of the SSC. This little window right here, they have a little tent out. This is the Wildcat Food Pantry. Um, and that is where we um, help students who might need a little extra help with food assistance. So you can come in, they still have hours even though um, campus is closed right now. They have, um, their hours are Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. So if you are in town or needing 
to grab a couple of extra groceries and need some help applying for CalFresh, which is the food assistance program in California, you can go ahead and come in. They have a phone number as well located on their website, but they are open 11 to 2 p.m. So we'll see them out here um, a little later. And then right across the SSC over here is the Miriam Library. So um, this is kind of the breezeway of the library. It's a four-story uh, facility as well. And the first and the third floor are kind of complete silent zones. So if you're someone that needs complete silence when you are studying, you get easily distracted, you might want to choose those floors to go on. The second and the fourth floor are kind of more no rule zones. So if you're someone that doesn't mind a little background noise, um, you are maybe studying with a group, some friends, you might choose to go on those floors. The second floor is home to our makerspace lab where we have like 3D printers, 3D scanners, vinyl cutters, a sewing machine. That's all a part of our makerspace lab. On this side of the library is our ITSS office. So if you need help um, connecting to our school Wi-Fi or downloading any of those programs, um, on campus, you can come there. And then it's also where you can pick up your school ID. When you come to campus, that's where you will pick up your ID, which is really important in college. You need your ID for a lot of stuff like access to buildings, access to certain labs, depending on your major. Um, the Miriam Library also has a lot of offices, like the Multicultural and Gender Studies Department is located in there, Path Scholars for Foster Youth, um, Tribal Relations is located in there, the Dream Center is located in there, and many more. Um, so that is, you know, a, a building that's usually pretty busy when um, school's in session on campus. So that's it for those two buildings. I'll pass it back to you, Jaina. Thank you, Diana. We're going to go ahead and pass it over to Christian now. And thank you guys so much for sending your questions in. I'll go ahead and try to answer a couple of those right now. I'll try to get to all of them before we're done. But somebody asked if we're going to be seeing a dorm room today. We won't be seeing any of the residence halls today because they're not currently open. Um, but you, we do have um, virtual tours on the website for university housing. So if you wanted to check those out, you can always do a virtual tour that way. All right. Hi, Jaina. My name is Christian. I'm going to be starting my third year here at Chico State. I'm a communication sciences and disorders major. I have two minors one in special education, the other in multicultural and gender studies. I'm from Stockton, California. Uh, so I'm pretty close to Chico, about two and a half hours south. I'll be starting here at the BMU. So this is our Bell Memorial Union. It was built in 2001. Um, this is right here at the marketplace. Um, here you can use your flex cash dollars that you get with your uh, meal plan for our first time freshmen or anybody who'd like to purchase one. Um, right here is our double doors, our entryway. Our Wildcat store is located right here. That's where you can pick up any Chico State apparel or swag. All of our uh, professors do um, post their book orders there. So that's mostly where you can purchase all of those. We do have a verified Apple store inside also. Um, it is three stories tall. And on the third floor right here, we have our Zenden. So that's actually pretty cool. Our Zenden has beanbag chairs, massage chairs, hammocks in there. They have twinkly lights with some water features. Try to get close so you guys can see through these doors. Um, we do have flags that represent all of our students that study from abroad that come to Chico State inside. All these different banners on the um, stairwell do represent over the 300 organizations that we have here on campus. CAVE is our oldest one. That is a community service uh, outreach program, which I actually volunteered with this spring semester. Um, and if you're interested in doing AS, or which is like our student body, like presidents, vice presidents, treasurers, and stuff like that, similar like ASB in high school, this is where you can find those applications and get kind of get more involved with Chico State. All right, and I'm going to hand it over back to you, Jaina. Thanks, Christian. So I'm noticing we're getting a lot of questions about housing. Um, we are experts on admissions, so we can't give you the full story on housing, but we do have an FAQ site on um, our Chico State website that's just dedicated to housing. So you can check that out or you can reach out to University Housing. Um, and then Gracie, we all are also, also getting a lot of questions about orientation, about certain days to sign up. Um, so if Gracie, you could send us the phone number and the email address in the comments so those students can get connected with someone from the orientation office, that would be absolutely amazing. And now we're going to send it over to Cheyenne, who is over at UPD and the Performing Arts Center. Hi, Cheyenne. Hi, Jaina. I'm sitting here with our two-year-old statue, Willie the Wildcat. Um, my name is Cheyenne. I am a third year here at Chico State. Um, 
My major is exercise physiology with a minor in movement studies. I'm from Inglewood, California, so if you guys are coming from down that way, I understand the commute and drive. And if y'all have any questions about that, feel free to ask them in my DMs for the ambassador page. But I'm going to show y'all around. This is the University Police Department. They have a full functioning police department with jurisdiction on campus. They're the reason that we have our blue lights on campus. They come in about two to three response time. For those of you that don't know what a blue light is, it's like a blue pole with a red button in the middle of it and it calls 911 for you. So even if you dial 911 from your phone, sorry, it's loud. <laughs> even if you dial 911 from your phone, they will be the ones to get the call. Um, they have different programs that they host, like Freshman Safe Start and Defense Training and Safe Safe Place. And they patrol our campus 24-7. So they are 24 hours. And you will go there to register your bikes. Now, bike theft is our number one crime in Chico, which is really great coming from Los Angeles, California. I prefer bike theft. So make sure you get those bikes registered. And I'm going to walk over to our Performing Arts Center. I'm going to try to get a better angle of it. But our Performing Arts Center is called PAC. We call it PAC. It's home to our music and theater departments. And it is School of the Arts. In there, we have a 24-hour recording art studio. And we have a large lecture, well, a couple large lecture halls that fit about 300 students. Even though our lecture halls are large, uh, they require you to take an activity and that ratio is about 23 to one professor so if you're more of an intimate type of learner this is great for you Let me show you around and there we have our harlem adams theater and rehearsal halls and each semester our performing arts students will have a performance in there i know last semester they did rocky horror which is really great and the semester before that it was beauty and the beast Back to you, Jaina. All right, thank you, Cheyenne. We're gonna head and send it on over to Caitlin. Um, I'm noticing we're getting quite a few questions. Where is Caitlin? Let me search her up one second. There she is. All right, so we're getting a lot of questions about work study. Um, one of the questions was, can you get onto Handshake while you're still, uh, while you're not a student yet, but you've been admitted? And the answer is yes. <laughs> So go ahead and check out Handshake anytime. They'll have all kinds of job listings, and you can check those out on your student portal. Um, and yeah, I'll get back to more of the questions later. Hi, Caitlin. Hi, um, my name is Caitlin. I am an anthropology major, um, and I'm also getting my certificate in um, forensic science, and I'm going to be a senior next year. And I'm originally from the East Bay or San Ramon, California, if anybody knows where that is. Um, I'm over here by the Arts and Humanities building. And the first thing that I do want to point out um, on the Arts and Humanities building is this really cool art installation. So this building is really new. It was built in 2016. And when they built it, they included um, this art installation. And these are actually real faces of uh, people in the Chico community. Um, and so it's like a really big example of like how close knit Chico State is with like the surrounding area. Um, and so um, I think it's really cool. I actually even have a couple friends whose faces got um, used for this um, installation right here. And then you can also see that that right there is our downtown area. So we are really close. It's like a really um, nice way to um, uh, go and into the community, grab something to eat, a bite for lunch, anything like that. Um, but otherwise, this is the Art of Humanity. Like I said, it's the newest building on campus um, as of right now, built in 2016. And it may not look like much always, but this building is actually 90,000 square feet. And inside of it, we have classrooms, faculty offices, uh, a recital hall, it's Zing Recital Hall, art studios, study areas on the second floor. Um, and so I can show you a little bit about what's going on in here. Um, so primarily, the Arts and Humanities building is home to the College of Humanities and Fine Arts, which is going to have majors like Humanities, History, Philosophy, English Education, English Literature. And I mentioned that we had some art studios in here. Um, so we're coming up on those now. This is actually one of our glass blowing studios. We are actually one of two CSUs to have a glass blowing studio on campus. Um, so it's pretty cool. So you can see they're, they're all, all the fires are out now, but those are the, the hills that they use for that. And then you can even see some of the glass work on the bottom that the students have done. And then, oh yeah, here's a really good example of some glass work 
that the students have done. And um, here we have, and then over here we have our ceramic studio. The curtains are down right now. Um, but um, yeah, and then these are all some classrooms that we have. And then on the second floor, up where all those windows are, we have uh, study areas, as well as an English as a second language tutoring center. Um, we are actually one of the only campuses to have a free English as a second language tutoring center. Um, and that's something that, so if English is your second language and you want some extra help with that, you can um, take part in that, or you can even get internships there and to help students learn English as a second language. Um, and then we also have three separate museums in our Arts and Humanities building. So we have, um, so right over here, you have our Janet Turner Print Museum and our University Art Galleries, and they just have really cool changing exhibits in there all of the time. Um, but yeah, this is a really cool building. It's one of my favorite places to come and study. Um, and yeah, uh, back to you, Jana. Thanks, Caitlin. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and send it on over to Diana. Uh, I think I just got a question about if you can sign up for um, summer classes right now. And I believe that that is already, um, those enrollment dates have already passed. Hi, Diana. <laughs> hey, Jaina. Um, so I was just talking with Jeff and Gracie. If you're there listening, we know there was a lot of questions regarding the fall semester. So Gracie, can you please in the comments pin the COVID-19 FAQ page um the link to it in the comments so people can go directly to that um so jeff would like you to pin that in the comments and then um somebody asked there's if the resources that we were announcing earlier would be available to students in person next semester and while a majority of them are going to be online only or virtually only there will be a few that um students will have access to in person so majority will be virtually still a few will be in person um available for appointments on so I just wanted to say that before I get started on my next building, my favorite building, probably the most iconic you've seen. So this is Kendall Hall, the beautiful Chico State sign, um, famous for a lot of graduation pictures. Um, so Kendall Hall is our administration building. So if you've ever Googled Chico State, you've most likely seen a picture of Kendall Hall. Um, like I said, it's an administration building. So unfortunately, there are no classes held here. But um, our really awesome president's office is located in here, the Human Resources Office, the Office of Student Diversity and Inclusion, um, and that's just to name a few. Um, so as I get closer, you can see um, it says administration. On the second floor is our university emblem, the Chico Torch of Knowledge. And then I'm going to show you a little closer up above the doors is our university motto, Today Decides Tomorrow. So you'll kind of see that sprinkled on many things throughout campus. And then right below down here, if you were to look before going into Kendall Hall, you will see these different dates that are currently spelling out CSU. These are actually time capsules. So every year, the graduating class gets to come together and bury a small item. 50 years later, we invite them back as alumni and we have a beautiful ceremony out here in the lawn and we get to display what it was that those students buried prior. Um, it's actually pretty fun. Um, some students get really funny with it. Some get a little more um, sentimental and heartwarming. I know people have buried like um, gas prices, menus, pictures, letters to themselves. I personally did my name tag as a tour guide because I thought that'd be pretty cool to see um, 50 years from now. But yeah, this is the beautiful Kendall Hall, a great picture spot um, for a lot of things. And sometimes if you've ever taken a picture, the president will walk out and kind of photobomb some pictures. It's really nice. She's really friendly. Um, but yeah, this is Kendall Hall. And I'll pass it back to you, Jaina. Thank you. And thank you guys for all the likes that we're getting. It's fun seeing you guys connect over the comments too. So keep that up. Make some friends while you're here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pass it on over to Christian, who is at Laxon Auditorium. And while we're getting that up, some fun facts for you. Um, our faculty to student ratio is 23 to 1, and our average class size is only 30 um, students. So most of the time when you have a class at Chico State, you're really getting to know your professors, which is a really awesome thing. Hi, Christian. Over. Hi, Jada. So I'm over here by Laxon Auditorium. This uh, here can actually photo over 1,200 students. We've had speakers like Maya Angelou, Bernie Sanders. We had Toretta Burke this past fall semester also. We've had some performances from Snoop Dogg in here also. Uh, I personally saw Beauty and the Beast my spring semester here at Chico State. Um, 
some really cool hands-on opportunities that our musical and theater departments put on for our students is during our spring events. Uh, they actually get to do hands-on opportunities from music and lighting, and they get some real work experience as to how to work all those different uh, mechanics and get a better understanding as to how they can um, put on a better show for people. And it's actually quite amazing. That's what they did with Feeding the Beast. And it was a really, really great production. Um, I absolutely loved it. Um, and the theater department also has hosted a little podcast with Chico State um, because they believe that we have a little ghost inside. Uh, I personally <laughs> always like to leave it up to the folks who've come visit Chico to see if they really do uh, see a woman in the pews or stuff like that. But if you're ever interested in that story, feel free to uh, look that up on the Chico State website. Um, but you can see how beautiful the architecture is with these little arcs here. The walkway area is super iconic for some pictures too. Um, and yeah, I'm going to hand it back over to you, Jaina. Thanks, Christian. Personally, I've never seen the ghost in the auditorium, but I love a good ghost story and I want to believe it. So that's good enough for me. All right, we're going to go ahead and send it over to Cheyenne, who's at Ayers Hall. Hi, Cheyenne. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to show y'all our Ayers Hall here. Um, in there, we have art and art history and a art sculpture lab. It's right there. <laughs> it's hard to see it, but it's like a big door and it looks like a sculpture. And that is because it is a sculpture leading to our sculpting <laughs> lab. In there, we have woodworking and blacksmithing. And we have a textured garden over here. It was created by our formal professor, Deborah Masters, and her students. She wanted the uh, low vision and blind to enjoy art. So if you notice, there's a bunch of different textures over here. My little brother is demonstrating how to get luck during finals and midterms by rubbing the belly. <laughs> but, so cute. Yeah, each one is a different texture here. And we're about to walk over to the physical science building right now. It looks like there's some people gathering up, having a meeting over there. I wonder if that's because we're about to get a new physical science building. <laughs> so I'm going to stay back so we don't get in their way. Okay, so let's take a good look of the physical science building here. It is home to our chemistry, biochemistry, environmental science, phys and our physics department. In there, we have an app. Back on. <laughs> You're back on. We have an atmospheric lab and a laser lab. But don't worry, we don't have Chico State students uh, shooting lasers at each other. They're shooting it at atoms. <laughs> back to you, Jaina. Thank you, Cheyenne. All right, we're going to go ahead and send it over to Caitlin. Let me find her real fast. And she is going to fill us in on the Machupta people and the Big Chico Creek, as well as some history on the Bidwells. Hi, Caitlin. Hi, so right now I am on one of Chico State's nine bridges on campus, um, and it goes over Big Chico Creek. Fun fact, we are actually the only CSU campus with a natural body of water flowing through it, and um, spots along the creek are actually some of my favorite places because you can um, go down in there and sit by a tree, and it almost feels like you're in the middle of a forest, like you can't even tell that there are people around you. So it's really cool. Um, and sometimes if you're lucky, you can even see a turtle or an otter uh, playing in the water. I've seen a turtle before. Um, some of my friends have sworn they've seen otters before, but I have yet to be so lucky, although I'm really confident that it is going to happen <laughs> one day before I graduate. Um, I really want to see an otter. Um, but before I talk about Bidwell Mansion and the founders of our university, as well as the founders of a lot of the city of Chico, I just want to take a moment to say that we acknowledge and are mindful of the fact that um, that Chico State stands on lands that were originally occupied by the first people of the area, the Machupta. And we would like to thank the Machupta and other native um, tribes for allowing us to obtain an education on their land. We actually have a tribal relations office whose sole purpose is with relating with the Machupta and other native students who come to Chico State, making sure that they feel uh, safe and respected on campus. Um, after the Machupta were here, we've got the Bidwells. Um, and so that right there is Bidwell Mansion. Um, John Bidwell actually owned a lot of Chico, um, a lot of the land here. Uh, we have a city park named after him, Bidwell Park. It's an excellent place to go. But he actually didn't spend a lot of time in um, 
in Chico because he spent a lot of his life in Washington, D.C., where he was quite the politician. He even ran for president at one point. Obviously, he didn't win, but um, he did meet his wife there, Annie. And when he proposed to her, the proposal went a little bit different than normal proposals do. Um, she said, I'll marry you if you build me a mansion on the West Coast where we're going to be living. And um, so he did. And this right there, Goodwill Mansion, is the result of that promise. Um, it has a really rich history with the university. It is, um, at one point, it was a woman's dormitory. Um, it no longer belongs to the school now. It's actually a state park because of how much uh, California history is associated with it. Um, and you can actually tour it yourself for um, a couple dollars. Um, and so I think that's a really cool piece of history that we have so close to campus. But something else that's really cool that came out of their um, marriage to each other is they discovered once they were married that they had actually had a bunch of different interests. Um, so uh, Annie really liked throwing these extravagant dinner parties and John really liked trees. And those two interests didn't really seem to mix until uh, they decided that uh, every person who came to one of their extravagant dinner parties had to bring a sapling from their native land. And the result of that is everything that you see around you. We have over 200 different species of trees on campus, one from every continent except for an Ant from Antarctica. And I'm pretty sure that's only because trees don't grow in Antarctica. Um, <laughs> But yeah, and we are a certified arboretum with the state, and you can even take a tree tour with our biological sciences department. And I think it's a really big part of what makes our campus beautiful. Back to you, Jana. All right, awesome. I've gotten a couple of questions that I just want to take a moment to answer. Um, one question was, are there counselors to help figure out what classes to take next semester? And yes, we do have an advising department in our student services center, and they do online services right now. So you will um, be able to get advising when it comes to picking out your classes every single semester. Um, and you'll also probably have a uh, major advisor as well. So once you get into the major, um, you'll have an advisor through your major. Um, another question I got was, should I try to find an apartment for Chico for fall 2020? Um, I think it was Natal Natalia. She sent us a link of all the classes that will be online. So if you don't have any classes that are going to be on campus, you don't have to move to Chico. That's obviously up to you. Um, and if you're looking for a place to live, um, we, uh, the university housing office will also help you with off-campus housing. So they're not only there to help you with university housing. If you're looking for assistance on where to live off campus, they can help you out as, that, as well. So go ahead and reach out to the university housing um, department. They're super, super helpful. And I'm going to head, I'm going to send it over to Diana. Where did Diana go? There she is. Thank you. And thank you to Natalia for sending that uh, link to us. That was very, very helpful. Hey, Jaina. Hello. All right. So right next to Bidwell Mansion that Caitlin just talked about is Modoc Hall. And this is home to the psychology department and the child development department. So, um, if those are the majors you're interested in or applying under this building is where your department will be located. Um, and just to kind of give you a little better sense of campus, um, we are on the complete diagonal across campus from where we first started. And one of the things that I like most about my campus is that it only takes me about 10 minutes to get from one side of campus to the other. So that's really um, nice to know maybe when you are um, picking classes. It only takes about 10 minutes usually to get from one end of campus to the next. Um, and then right next to Modoc Hall is Holt Hall. Um, so this is a pr another pretty large building. Um, you'll, I'll kind of walk along the side of it. So Holt Hall is home to the College of Natural Sciences. So a few majors in here include um, nutrition and food science, um, biological sciences, math and statistics. Uh, the college, the School of Nursing is located on the third floor. And um, the cool thing about Holt Hall is that there are a lot of labs located here. So we have a taxidermy lab, we have a microbiology lab, a fish lab, um, a plant lab. We have um, uh, every, an, or our, how could I forget, our anatomy lab. I took anatomy and microbio in, in this building. And the cool thing about the anatomy lab is that every year we get two cadavers donated to us every semester from UC Davis. What better way to study the human body than to hands-on get to study two bodies that were donated to science for us to learn. So if you um, are in the sciences or even if um, your first two years here you're taking general education courses that require a science lab, um, chances are you will have a lab or a class in Holt Hall. Thanks, Dana. All right, thank you, Diana. We're gonna have, go ahead and send it on over to Christian. Christian, there he is. 
Um, and another fun fact, Chico State was founded in 1887, which makes us the second oldest CSU right behind San Jose State. Hi, Christian. Hi, I'm right here at Alumni Glen. This was actually worked on by the class of 2011 in the concrete uh, industry major. Um, this actually gives us a better view of the creek and it gives us quicker access for our environmental students to be able to go down to the creek, get some water testing done. Our students are able to uh, utilize the creek any time of the year. It is kind of frigid in the winters due to the uh, snow runoff from the Seattle's, but uh, definitely put, dip your feet in like today. It's about 100 degrees later on, so that cold water does feel good. You can see our Ambassador Diana walking right there. Uh, but we have our Chico State Torch of Knowledge right here uh, to just remind us as to um, what are like our goals here at Chico State. My biology class is actually really big about uh, coming out here and enjoying uh, this outside area. We would try to find different activities that we could do for labs. Uh, finish notes up here, kind of get out of the uh, lecture class hall, and actually really helped. Um, I felt more engaged. And just look at our beautiful trees out here. It's a great spot to just be able to enjoy um, our nature and our Arboretum campus. Um, I usually would take naps in that little grass area right here. You can't really see, but it's really nice. Um, and I'm going to start walking over to the President's Mansion. Uh, it's Sherbert Orange, and it was actually just renovated in 2017. And it was built by the first female architect of California, Julia Morgan. Um, one highlight that I had for my sophomore year uh, was that I was able to actually go in to the president's mansion. It is restricted from students, but I was invited to a luncheon with a multi-million dollar donor. And it was actually quite cool to be able to go. I'm going to kind of go over the fence for y'all, but here's a little look into the back area of the courtyard. Um, it's kind of cool. I was lucky enough I had never been inside before. I actually really, really enjoyed it. Our current president, Dr. Gil Hutchinson, does not live there or our previous presidents. Um, we usually use it as alumni association areas for our previous graduating classes. We've had students recognized inside there before also for outstanding achievement. Uh, hopefully some of y'all will be lucky enough like me and be able to go inside. Uh, but I'm gonna hand it back over to you, Jaina. All right, thank you, Christian. I'm gonna go ahead and answer some questions that we got. Uh, CN Martinez asked us about spring housing um, and we actually haven't finalized our spring housing plans yet, um, but it is, they are talking about taking spring applications. So we can't get a definite answer for you right now, but that's what we're planning. Um, so thank you for that question. And then Jeremiah asked me, how do I find out who my counselor is? Our advising office does uh, drop in advising. So you won't be assigned to a counselor. You'll just go ahead and see who's ever is in the office at the time. Um, and then uh, if you have a major advisor, that'll actually pop up in your student center. Um, so on your portal, if you go into your student center, you'll have your major advisor um, in one of the tabs on that website. Um, so thanks for your questions. Thanks for sending likes, helping each other out. Keep it going. I'm going to go ahead and send it over to Cheyenne now. And she's going to show us a little bit on the outside of some of our uh, residence halls. Hi, Jaina. I'm standing in between our oldest resident halls on campus, Lassen Hall and Shasta Hall. They are sister dorms, so, you know, we have double rooms inside of them. You will have a roommate if you live in these two. But they are the closest to our academic building, so I guess that's a plus for those students who are living there. In there, we have laundry rooms, large study rooms, game rooms. Um, we do have 24-hour professional staff on call in these buildings. Um, there's a commercial kitchen and there are community restrooms in here. Um, each week, the RAs have to give a different event. So over here, we have a volleyball. I think they took the volleyball court down, but they had a volleyball court there and this large grassy area. So they do uh, events every week for these students in here. Back to you, Jaina. Thanks, Cheyenne. All right, we're gonna go ahead and send it over to Caitlin, who's gonna show us um, a couple more residence halls that we have on campus right next to those. Let me find her. There she is. 
Hi, Caitlin. Hi. Um, so I am standing in Sutter Courtyard in um, right by two more of our residence halls. So this right here is Sutter Hall. Um, so there are dorms on the upper floors of this, but primarily um, the whole first floor is our main dining hall. It's Sutter Dining um, right in there. So it's kind of an all-you-can-eat style um, dining hall. So you have meal swipes and you just swipe to get in and you can go in there for um, a quick 30-minute lunch or you can stay in there for a few hours and study and just grab a snack every uh once in a while. Um, right over here we have our wildcat den. This is a newer um, eatery place on campus. It has some healthier options um, and it has also some uh, takeout options so you can just um, take out, uh, you can go in there um, and grab something and then take it to class if you need to. Um, and then right over here is one of our more popular uh, residence halls. We have Whitney Hall. It's actually the second tallest building north of Sacramento so that's another really cool thing. Um, and so that's that's a lot a lot of students choose to live in that one or um or uh, they end up getting put in there because it houses most of our students on campus and then right over there you've got the hub um this hub is a place where students get together to um uh, they can do study sessions, they can hang out, they have games in there, they have free printing in there, um, sometimes they have tutoring in there um, as well. So it's a pretty um, cool place where students can just go if they need to get like get out of their dorm for a little bit um, or need somewhere to chill between classes. Um, yeah, back to you, Jana. Thank you, Caitlin. All right, we're going to send it over to Diana again. Hey, Jaina. Hello. All right. So I'm kind of in a central point for a couple um, really important academic buildings. So I'll kind of go ahead and point them all around me. Let's start off with Butte Hall. This is a seven-story tall um, building home to the College of Behavioral and Social Sciences. So a couple majors in Butte Hall include political science, sociology, social work, anthropology, public health, health services administration. Um, they're all kind of located in different um, departments on different floors, but yes, this is Butte Hall. And then right across from Butte Hall is Butte Station. So this is kind of like a quick little snack shop. You can buy some last minute um, pencils, uh, testing scantrons, grab a quick coffee or a bite to eat. And then right next to Butte Station, this building right here, um, in between kind of the residential corner over there and Butte Hall is Chehama Hall. So this is home to the College of Business and the College of Communication and Education. Um, the cool thing about Chehama Hall that not many people know is that there is a really awesome food science lab in here. Um, as a nutrition major um, or as a minor, you get to take a class in this food lab. Imagine going into a huge industrial kitchen with like four ovens, four stoves, a uh, full-size pantry, and it's attached to its own little classroom on the side. And that classroom is where we do like taste testing. And it's kind of hard to believe that we cook and taste test for college credit, but you get to learn science behind um, certain food making skills. So that's kind of a little shout out to the nutrition department. Um, if you have a chance to check that lab out, there's other labs in there as well, but that's just one I'm personally very familiar with. And then over here is Plumas Hall. Let me get um, on the other side of this tree here. Plumas Hall is home to the Orion, which is our student-ran newspaper. And it's also home to the College of Agriculture. So we have a huge university farm located a couple of miles south of campus. It's an 800-acre farm. Um, but when our students in agriculture are not on the farm, many of their classes are here in Plumas Hall. And then another cool thing about Plumas Hall is in the basement, um, we have a human identification lab. And um, it's one of the biggest on the West Coast, which is pretty cool. And um, a lot of times these students work in teams with professors to get to work in that identification lab. Fun fact about the human identification lab is that there's a couple thousand um, flesh-eating beetles in there. Uh, not to worry, they're very well contained and they only eat dead skin. So, um, you know, you don't have to be, really be worried about that. But that's just a little bit about Plumas Hall and I'll hand it back to you, Jaina. Thank you, Diana. All right, we're gonna send it over to Christian now. Um, and Natalie or Natalia asked me to pin that link about which classes are going to be online. I'm going to take that down in a moment because I need to have the coronavirus link up on there. So if you're wondering, uh, take down that link right now before I unpin it. <laughs> All right. Hi, everyone. I'm right here at the Wildcat uh, Health Center. This is where students can be seen by licensed doctors and uh, registered nurses, a uh, registered nurses, sorry. And we do have a pharmacy inside here that uh, it's actually a, at a heavy discount for most students. Uh, I actually had bronchitis last semester, and I went inside, 
they gave me about five different medications to take and I paid under ten dollars for all of them so it just gives you kind of uh, idea as to how heavily discounted those medications are you can get lab work done inside for a few dollars uh, you can also uh, get done x-rays and casts put on also like one of our coworkers, Gracie had to get one on a few years ago um, but I've been doing I've been going being seen here by a few doctors before um, I get my labs work done here also so it's a great uh, resource they are seeing uh, students also at a limited um, amount so feel free if you are uh, feeling sick or under the weather you can still be seen by our doctors and nurses inside here um, and back to you Jaina thank you Christian all right we got a couple of more stops left so if you still have questions send them in this question box and I can get to those at the end of the tour but right now we're gonna go over to Cheyenne who's over at Akersh and Schumer gym and Yolo Hall um, and one more fun fact, our university farm is only five miles away from campus. So our agriculture students get to go um, shuttle over to the farm all the time and do some of their hands-on lab work at our farm, which is 800 acres. So I'm standing in front of Acker and Schumer Gym. It's right over here. It's this long stretch. It goes all the way down to about the light where Christian is. That's where the um, health center is or the Wellcat Center is. So in, a in Acker and Schumer Gym, it's home to our NCAA Division II sports programs. In there, or we have baseball, softball, basketball, cross country, golf, soccer, track and field, and volleyball. Um, cool thing about that is that the events are free with your Chico State Wildcat card. It's in well, it's not technically free, but it's included with our tuition. And I'm walking over to Yolo Hall right now. That's my department over there. It's home to our recreation, hospitality, and parks management departments, along with our kinesiology and exercise physiology departments. Um, this is the front of it right here. And I'm about to walk towards the middle over here. So in there we have uh, rehabilitation rooms, three large lecture halls, ballroom, research labs, um, a hydrotherapy pool. Cool thing about this building is you don't have to be a exercise physiology or kinesiology major to take classes in here. My friend took a ballroom dance class and it was pretty cool to look in her room. It was a bunch of mirrors and uh, ballerina poles around the um, room. And I took a movie class in here. So it was a nice big room with a big TV where we got to watch movies for credit, which is really awesome. So back to you, Jaina. Thank you, Cheyenne. All right, someone asked um, which classes are going to be for sure in person. That is already up on our um, class schedule on the Chico State website. So if you're signed up for classes, you can check them out there, um, see which ones are going to be online and plan accordingly. They'll also probably be in the student center for your classes. Um, so you can go ahead and check that out. And I'm going to go ahead and send it over to Caitlin. Okay, so I'm back on the main campus, and so this first building is Glen Hall. So uh, the actual college and the faculty office for a lot of um, business majors is located in Tehama Hall, but um, since business is one of our more popular majors on campus, um, we have uh, pretty much this building is dedicated to a lot of the resources for business students um, and a lot of the offices and like um, printing labs and all sorts of things like that for business students are in Glen Hall right here. Um, yeah, another thing is we actually have a business program that's within the top 15% of business programs in the nation. So that's pretty cool. If you are interested in business, Chico State might be the school for you. And then right over here, we have the building that's going to be replacing our physical science building. This building is called the Science Building. It is going to be completed in spring of um, 2021. Um, and so you can see that we have a construction crew even going now uh, working to make sure that happens. Um, there's going to be a lot of cool uh, resources in that building. Um, I'm told that all of the windows are open into classrooms so people can uh, see others like doing science, like even as they're walking by. Um, and yeah, there's just going to be a lot of really cool resources in this building for uh, physical science students to use. And I know they're all really excited to get a new building. Um, back to you, Jana. All right. Thank you, Caitlin. I'm going to answer a couple of questions that I got in my question box now. Um, will it open? 
Okay, someone asked when I will be able to enroll for my online classes if I'm an upcoming freshman. Um, same thing as everybody else. Once you get into your orientation, they'll help you sign up for the classes that you need. So just let them know that you're wanting to sign up for some online classes. Um, I guess, well, they'll mostly all be online. And then someone else asked me, are we getting a picture ID? Once you're on campus, you can get a picture ID. Um, you'll need a picture ID for most things on campus. Um, and that's going to be in on the first floor of the library in our ITSS office. And you'll use that all around campus. Okay, and second to last stop on the tour is our engineering centers. And we're going to go have Diana show us around. Hey, Diana. Um, so I'm already I'm over here hanging out by the engineering corner of campus, which is located right across um, where the new science building is going to be. So this is home to, uh, or this is O'Connell um, Technology Center. And then right next to, I'll walk closer, is Langdon Engineering Center. So both of these buildings are kind of sibling buildings and they're home to the College of Engineering, Computer Science and Construction Management. Um, so a couple of majors in here include um, Applied Computer Graphics, Computer Science, Concrete Industry Management, Electrical or Computer Engineering, Mechanical and Megatronic Engineering. Let me walk over to the other side. Um, so a lot of the times when you hear them say, oh, this building is home to this department, um, it doesn't necessarily mean that all of your classes are going to be in that building. You can have classes throughout any of the buildings we've been talking about today. Um, that just means that that um, major's department is usually located in that building. Um, so just I wanted to give students that reminder because I've had like a random nutrition class in here, philosophy or a public health class. I've had, build, I've had classes on all sorts of buildings throughout campus. So this is um, the Langdon, um, Langdon Hall. And so there's civil engineering over here, construction management, manufacturing technology, and that's just to name a few. I can't name all of the majors under the College of Engineering, but there are a lot. We have a really great engineering program here. Um, the cool thing, I'm going to walk through these two buildings because um, there is uh, this whole backside that is a student workshop. So again, I mentioned in the beginning why your student ID card as a student is really important because you get access to certain buildings. One of them, uh, for example, are these labs and workshops back here. As an engineering student with your ID card, you have 24-7 access to some of these labs. So you can come and work at 3 a.m., at 8 a.m., at 5 p.m., whenever um, is most convenient or best for you. Um, so if you like working early morning or late at night, um, that's, I think, something that's pretty cool. You have access to this all week long. So here's what this hallway looks like, filled with labs on this side and on this side. And you can exit the building across that way. I'm walking through. Um, Lincoln Hall is a three-story building. And um, yeah, that's just a little bit about these. There's some nice shade through here. I'm going to pop out on the other side. Um, across the rec. So the engineering center is really close to the rec where Christian is going to talk a little bit about next, but um, that's a little bit about engineering. Back to you, Jaina. Thank you, Diana. All right. Our last stop on the tour is with Christian at um, the rec or our Wildcat Recreation Center, one of my favorite stops on the tour. And so since this is our last one, be sure to send your last minute questions into our question box. All right, so I'm right here at the last stop, certainly not Lisa. This is our beautiful rec or the Wildcat Recreation Center. Uh, this is our main gym here at Chico State. This is all included in your tuition, um, so you don't have to pay an outside membership fee or anything. As long as you're paying those student fees and stuff, you will have access to this. Um, the only outside pocket expense that you would experience would be in this far corner right here, um, which is our personal training corner. Um, if you wanted to hire a personal trainer, that would be the only fee that you would experience. Here's a little inside look into that corner right there. Um, this is another LEED certified building. It was built in 2009. Um, one really cool thing is that when you walk in, you can actually like place your hand down, you put your ID number in and it grants you access. You can kind of see the second level right there. Our rock climbing wall uh, does have over 60 different routes on it and they do... Uh, specialize in intro climbers and they teach students how to actually uh, belay and uh, rock climb the different routes. We do have our front desk area right here. Um, there are some friendly folks to allow you oops, maybe we get a quick look. Uh, they do allow um, right there they post all the different openings for the classes and stuff for group exercises um, like 
yoga classes. They've done mixed martial arts, um, self-defense classes and stuff. Uh, quick little look again. Most of the second floor is our cardio equipment area. We do have an eighth of a mile track that's suspended above our three full-size basketball courts are, that were just renovated this last August. Um, let's look at our free weights and dumbbell area that is located right over here. It does extend up onto the second floor. Uh, so we have a lot of different machinery for our students to use, a lot of equipment. Uh, you can get some jump ropes, weightlifting belts from the front desk also. Um, my personal favorite thing about the rec is the uh, pool area, which unfortunately I can't show from this angle. Uh, but the pool area is actually uh, my favorite spot. I hate running for cardio, so I usually go ahead and swim laps at the pool um, that's where our water polo and swim teams uh, do practice also. Um, and we do have a few different events that happen for the students up there at the uh, pool deck. And um, yeah, and that's mostly it for me from the rec. Thank you, Jaina. I'll hand it back over to you. Thank you. All right, I had someone ask me what would be a good way to meet transfer students. Um, we do have a transfer leadership program called Let's for escaping me what that stands for but you'll get connected with other transfer students that are looking for leadership opportunities but um there's many ways to connect students we have all kinds of campus organizations and you're if you're interested um in what our kind of campus organizations are you can always check out the wildcat sync link that's in your student portal um, and that has all the different kinds of clubs that we have on campus here so you can go ahead and check that out um when do we know which books to get if we need any um, once you're signed up for classes, you can go ahead and check your Blackboard link, which is also in your student portal. Sometimes your professors will have that information in their syllabuses if they've upla uploaded that before the class starts. Um, but most of the time, they'll let you know that during like the first week of school. So you won't have to worry about that quite yet most of the time. Will the Wildcat Pantry be open for the fall? I believe so. It's open right now. So I would assume it would still be open then. Um, and... I think that's all the questions. Let me just double check that I've gone to everybody. Um, then I was asked if I could talk about EOP a little bit. I'm not an expert on EOP. We do have an EOP um, web page on our um, uh, Chico State website. And I know there's a separate application to get into EOP. So um, definitely reach out to some of the advisors there. Diana is requesting to go live, so let's see what she wants to talk to us about. Hey, Jaina, I know there were a couple questions about the food pantry, and they are open right now, so I can go ahead and give people a quick little look as to what to expect when you kind of walk in. So right now they're doing awesome. um, some stuff. They have, like, special um like tables out here and distancing distancing happening because of um you know covid and safety precautions needing to be taken but this is the entryway to the pantry um so you can come in i won't go all the way in but there's always lovely staff here working ready to help students apply for cal fresh or get anything they might be looking for um they have a good selection of items they have a fridge that's located back there and a freezer hello um, so this is just giving a shout out to the students that are working here and a nice little peek at all of the wonderful food that people donate uh, for our students. So just wanted to share that. Thanks, Jaina. I'll go ahead. Awesome. Thank you, Diana. Get back over. Awesome. So glad to see that. Um, and then someone asked, do we pick our classes during our scheduled orientations? And yes, that's the main goal of orientation is helping you get in those classes so you can definitely um, have all those questions answered by an orientation peer advisor. Um, but that just about concludes our tour. Thank you for joining us. We have lots of other ways to connect with our office right now as well. You can hear from admission counselors and virtual presentations um, from us, the students and live student panels um, and speak with any of our staff on the phone or via email. Our email address is info, I-N-F-O at csuchico.edu. Um, and we are here for you if you want to join or if you want to support your journey to Chico State and the Wildcat family, whether you're joining us in fall or applying in the future. So thank you guys for joining us. Thank you to our um, tour guides for running around the hot campus right now. It's like 100 degrees there right now. So thank you guys for doing that for us. Looks like we have some last minute questions, so I'll try to answer those. 
how do I find out who my counselor is? I want to schedule an appointment to pick my classes, but I haven't been able to find out who it is. Um, so if you're coming in for your first year, that will mostly be taken care of during orientation. You should be able to meet with a faculty advisor and with a peer advisor to help you out with all those questions. But during the semester when you're in school, we have a drop in ad advising hours in our student services center. Um, extremely pleased. Oh, thank you so much. Midnight Denizen. I don't know how to say that, but thank you so much. Um, and yeah, thank you guys for joining us. Thank you for helping each other out. Um, hopefully we'll do another one of these soon. So everyone have a good one.